What follows is a journey, a pilgrimage, an adventure. Eight days in the depths of the British winter on the ridges of one of Britain's most famous trails. Whatever the elements throw at me, the ups and downs of life on the trail, eating outdoors, sleeping outdoors, being outdoors. And what a way to start it, blowing a gale, waves crashing into the cliffside below, and rain on the horizon. I left a relatively shielded from the wind, Eastbourne in the dust, and now at a place called Beachy Head, white cliffs and seas. It's a pretty beautiful place, It'd be even nicer on a sunny day, um, but it's not all that beautiful. I mean, a lot of people come here uh, to take their life. It's a popular place, around 20 people a year on average uh, commit by jumping off the cliffs here. You know, we all have rough patches, and, uh, but don't you ever think that it won't get better, son, because it does. to find a little bit of shelter behind this monument here. It's just gonna take a little rest to get out of the wind. Now, I take every other single weather you can throw at me, but I cannot stand the wind. Oh. Shelter is up. Um, I thought it was up earlier, um, and then I was laying under it, and the trekking pole came down, blocked me straight in the nose. So good times, but it's up now. It's gonna keep us dry. It's gonna keep us out of the wind, and uh, there's enough space in here for myself and all my gear. So the wind. So. I'm here, munching on some peanuts. Um, I don't even really feel like making a dinner tonight. I'm just beat, that wind has taken out of me. It's just been constant from start of the day to the end of the day. It's just this wind. <sighs> Probably gonna have this though. This is a, uh, tuna lunch so I'm probably gonna have that and it's simply crawl into bed into my spivvy bag and hope that the wind dies out by the morning uh, we're supposed to have rain I think rain is gonna be coming overnight 
as long as this stays in place and doesn't get blown out when it pisses down with rain, we don't even care. I'm gonna set up my bivvy. It's only it's 25 past seven. But the wind just exhausts me. I hate it. Hate the wind. And now just making up a coffee. Um, I can't remember what I was going to say. But I'm making up a coffee. Trying to perk myself up because uh, positive thinking going into tomorrow. Because it's, it's days like today where it's like the first day and the, the, the weather's just like this. And it's like, why am I out here? So, I don't know. Coffee makes everything better, does it not? So, that's what I'm doing now. And then I'm gonna have that coffee. Gonna have something to eat. Cause I'll need it. And then um, it also contributes to, I eat that, it means less weight in a pack, so. And then I'm gonna go to bed. God, I'm already in. I'm already set up. And it feels good to be in a bivy bag. So, see you in the morning. At this point, 1.30 in the morning, we're just getting hammered. It's weather. The wind is driving the rain underneath the top. Everything's wet. What a great start. Well, that was a pleasant evening. At least the wind has died down. Still got rain. So this is where we got to last night. Brass Point, halfway point along the Seven Sisters. So obviously currently here, we just keep on moving along. In the rain. Tell you what, navigating this uh, section in the dark last night wasn't fun, wasn't fun at all. But just a tiny little headlight going on. I uh, can't see much and obviously it goes up and it goes down and it's uh yeah it's hard work that right there in the distance is where I wanted to end up last night obviously with no service and being dark didn't know how far away from it I was so yeah it didn't happen Ah, update, update, we're finally getting, we're finally getting off this cliff side, here we go. Now for a stead, four and a half miles that way, now I'm getting a coffee. So I've left Beachy Head and the Seven Sisters in the dust. Just walking past this river here. I think it may be the Thai River or something along those lines that just snakes its way down to the sea. Walking on a trail on a cliffside and it's only when I go across the road do I nearly break my ankle. Ponies grazing. And they are. Over the wall. And onwards.
always keeping a lookout for luck. Always keeping a lookout for little places to pitch camp. This would be an ideal spot, Justin, here. But it's only midday, so uh, yeah, it doesn't quite make sense. Probably going to be one of those though that uh, I'm going to pass this up and then I'll probably still be looking for a place to camp tonight. Get mad. Just in Littlington. Uh, it's a tiny little village, even if you can call it that. It's, uh, there's a few houses and a pub. I've got one mile to go until Alfriston and then I can take a proper seat and see if I can uh, possibly use that campgrounds, drying facilities, maybe, maybe even stay there, I don't know. Probably not, as I say, it's closed. So we can but try. So I've taken five minutes here and then we'll be on the way again. Just been uh, making my way up this big old hill yet another one. Uh, I still got I still got a ways to go up. Uh, but I decided not to go to the old campground because it's going out of my way. And uh, instead, what I'm going to opt for is I was checking out the maps, and at the top of this hill, there should be a little woodland, and I'm hoping to pitch camp there tonight. So once I get to the top find a place to camp, it will still be relatively early. And they're gonna give me the opportunity to dry out everything I need to dry out, hopefully, or dry it out more than it is now. Because we've got rain again tomorrow, and tomorrow's mission is not only to walk even further, but to keep everything dry as well, so. I also wanna sort out my bag because I, there was stuff strewn all over the place this morning and it's just a bit of a mess right now so i need to sort the bag out also so a little organization a little drying out and uh and then yeah i'll catch you at the top i reached the top and i'm continuing westwards because i still think oh, i've got enough time we'll find somewhere to pitch camp and uh i still have a whole evening to try and dry out uh, whatever i need to dry out failing that there is a YHA not too far from here that we have to pass by anyway. So I may have to just be a little cheeky, pop in, and ask to use their laundry facilities. <sighs> Good views. Good views. The sun finally shows itself. And it do feel good. You can see all the way in the distance, that wasn't the River Tide, that was um, Cuckmere River or something like that. And that little, little uh, ridge there with the cliff there, that's where we came from. We haven't got that far at all. The old hand glide is out. So I found a spot to pitch camp for the night. Temperature's dropping, it's getting colder. Uh, but this will be the spot right here. I'm gonna lay out uh, the roll mat right now and my sleeping bag, just lay the sleeping bag inside out on top of it, hopefully get it dry out. <sighs> just giving it a little assistance here. We're already damp. Jumper. I've got my sleeping bag, baby bag, hung up to dry. Uh, they probably won't because it's uh, not that warm and it's not that much of a breeze at the moment. So I might just have to deal with it for tonight. As I say, tomorrow the YHA has a laundry facilities that hopefully I'll be able to use as it's passing through.
So this will be our home for the night. Still trying to dry out my sleeping bag there. Uh, but yeah, a couple of trekking poles each side. So I've been on a go slow this past day and a half and uh, and that's intentionally and I need to focus on going slow because I generally walk at a fast pace and I just don't want to bail myself out too soon. If you're familiar with the channel you know I've, I've done, well I haven't done this trail before, I attempted this trail before, much different time, that was in the summer and it was around 30 degrees. Big problems that day, I had a super heavy pack. This pack is heavy. It has to be heavy because it's winter. I've got to carry all the food that I need out here. That could be out here for seven, eight, nine days. And I need to carry the extra clothing, layers and whatnot. So it's gonna be heavy, can't forego that. But yeah, when I did it during the summer, blisters, big old blisters. Fortunately, I haven't got any blisters. Thus far, I am prepared for blisters. I've got some compete. It's supposed to be good. So we'll see about that. So yeah, it's just on the go slow, but um, I'm thinking tomorrow, we're not gonna stop so early. And we're gonna, we're gonna push on through the night and just see where we get to. Um, we'll still be on the go slow, but we'll go slow for longer. Posh pork and beans tonight, that's a, hearty British breakfast of potato and pork baked with three types of beans and tomato sauce. Careful. Careful. Give it a mix. Seal it up and leave for 15 minutes. I've got to give it to the old fire pot meals. They include really decent sized pieces of meat in them. Good quality stuff actually. And these are the extra large servings. Uh, I can never normally finish it. Uh, I'm not sure I'll be able to finish this one. Gonna try though. So just before I go to bed down, what I've done is I've lowered the poncho for the rain in the morning because rain is coming in the morning and I don't want to be in a position where it's getting, it has easy access in. So I have lowered it and uh, what I'm doing now is just aerating the old feet. I'm going to put on some foot powder, some fresh socks, okay? Because I learned my lessons. You've got to take care of those feet. If not, this will happen. It's not good, guys. It's not good at all. Into my nice, damp sleeping bag. And that's where I'm wearing my waterproofs. Because everything else is wet, I'm dry. Gotta say though, a little concerned about tomorrow. It's supposed to be having a lot of rain. And with that rain, there's gonna be wind. So yeah, I'm not super excited for that. Because today's been an easy day. You know, relatively easy. I mean, we had that little bit of rain this morning, but we didn't have that wind. Um, so, and then the rain died off around the afternoon, so not too bad. But uh, yeah, tomorrow, different story, according to the forecast. Speaking of the forecast, I did check it before I came, and it was only supposed to rain for about one or two days. And uh, turns out we have rain for the next uh, three or four days now. So, 
I don't know why I blubber. I'll see you guys in the morning. Welcome to day three. Putting my pot and pan to use out there collecting some rainwater for me. I woke up this morning and what woke me up was actually the lack of rain. I woke up and immediately thought, well, where's the rain? I looked out, it's just a fine mist out there. So you have to make hay while the sun shines. So I got all my sleep system away while it wasn't raining. That's half the battle, right? It's uh, trying to keep your sleeping bag dry and all that dry uh, while you're packing away and whatnot. It's always hard work to do it under a tarp, a poncho, or, or even in a tent or something. But uh, if it's uh, not raining, take the opportunity to get everything away while it's dry. My sleeping bag dried out quite well, to be honest. But I still might just pop in that uh, YHA and uh, grab a coffee and hopefully just use that so that you can maybe just get just get warm. Just get warm for 10 minutes or so. Day three, back on the trail. Visibility is poor. Ah, I don't know if I'm feeling it yet, you know? I mean, because every day has been the same. Heavy pack on the back. Uh, but in terms of like aches and pains, uh, not really feeling that yet. Just the aches and pains of heavy back on the back. But uh, legs are still good. Body's still good. What I'd like to do this evening is sit back and actually calculate the distance we've come, how many miles we've done. Uh, Cause that'll be interesting. I have no idea. Not, not one, not one idea. There's probably some pretty awesome views either side of us, but can't see nothing. As I was saying, sometimes it just feels like a test. The weather wasn't supposed to be like this. It's like I've walked into a storm. My shoes are soaked through. They're supposed to be waterproof. And I've done everything I could to keep my my shoes dry. I haven't, I've avoided big puddles. And uh, just when a big old rainstorm came down, I felt just getting soaked through. And, uh, 
Yeah, it's supposed to be waterproof. We'll have to have a discussion soon on what's waterproof and what's not. And these are mountain warehouses as well, so they should be they should be alright, but uh, there you go. So yeah. You know when you feel like you're being tested? managed to reach the YHA and uh, they let me dry some of my stuff. I dried as much as I could because I haven't got all day, right? Now it started to rain again, just as I've left. So I've ducked under this little shelter here, but uh, not sure how much longer we can wait because we need to, we need to start moving. That's what we need to do. We need to start moving. It would take way too long. I don't know how people do 20 miles a day. I can't do that. The old rain, it's not so bad down here, there's no wind. But when we start going up, and it get windy, and it's just like pellets in your face. I would so much rather do this trail in the summer. We're beginning to lose light already. Um, it's only about quarter to five. And uh, yeah, in the summer, there's a lot less to go wrong. In the winter, obviously it gets dark earlier. You have to carry more weight. And also you get wet, you've got to figure out how to dry off. Because if you don't dry off and you're on the hills, they're all exposed, could spell trouble. Uh, I'm hoping that's not gonna be the case for me but uh, I know uh, my waterproofs aren't being all that waterproof right now so chalk road here and uh, I saw something in a road that stopped me in my tracks. They have an issue. Holy moly. Alright, you guys, you're looking great. You're looking great. I tell you. I don't like this. Can you guys move? Holy fuck. Standing in the middle of the road. Could my day get any better? Come on guys, let me pass. Like, I don't want to be walking past, squeezing through, and one of you guys are going to be kicking me in the nuts. Okay? So, I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to go my way, and you go your way, and we're good. Sound good? Um, cool. All right, shit. Do you guys want to get past first? I'm squeezing through. 
because I've got face, it's raining and I've had enough. Mm. I'm being bullied right now. <laughs> shit! I'm not in the mood for this shit. They're just staring at me. Thank you guys. I appreciate that. Restricted byway. Restricted byway. Public footpath. So where's the fucking South Downs way? <sighs> Look at this. It's full of water. I can wring them out. Absolutely miserable. Little, little, little bit of a down day. To be honest, I'm not, I'm not in my happy place right now. I just want a break from the wind and the rain. Uh, my feet are wet again, and I, it was only like yesterday. It was only like 24 hours ago. I was talking about foot care, and that's gone out the window for me because my shoes are soaked through again. Um, not good. Not a happy camper. So I don't quite know where that leads us now in terms of the trail. Uh, because, you know, I'm a little frustrated because I stopped in that dry room uh, in a YHA, used their dry room. My sleeping bag's dry, so that's good. Um, but whatever clothes I did dry off also, I just went straight back out and ended up in the same position. My fleece is damp, my down jacket's damp, and cold, but all of that I can deal with. But it's the it's the feet pain that I can't deal with, that whole dead the damp feet. Because I've been there and I've done that and it took days to recover and uh, so pretty deflated right now and uh, we're gonna see see what tomorrow brings that's that's it Let's see what tomorrow brings raining again of course deflated disastrous uh, day yesterday so that rain and the wind it's just it really got me but today I think it's the last day of the rain and that's supposed to be this afternoon doesn't look like it, it looks like it's gonna be now but I'm walking in damp shoes well, not even damp it's just wet all in wet shoes wet socks Put my socks in my sleeping bag last night and all it really did was make them nice and warm to put on this morning. Uh, nice, warm and damp. Obviously I have another pair of dry socks but I keep those for the evenings when I uh, take off my wet socks. So yeah, let's, let's see how far we get. And just like that, the rain is back. You know, I don't even know why I bother with the forecast. I'm all excited about tomorrow where it says it's not going to rain, but uh, you know, just probably going to get my hopes up just for them to be dashed. Just because you're on the trail doesn't mean you can't eat well. So I wouldn't usually go to burger vans, uh, but I didn't have dinner last night. I wanted something quick and easy, so that hit the spot. Didn't sleep well last night either, where it was damp, so I was colder, and uh, yeah, just a, just all round uh, awful day yesterday. Today is looking a little better so far. I've got five miles now to Ditchling Beacon, the highest point 
in East Sussex with a height of 248 meters. Uh, so, yeah. The uphills are kind of getting to me now. I'm going to have to slow down for the uphills, but uh, the flats and the downhills are okay. Apart from how slippery it all is. And the downhills make me a little sad, to be honest, because you know you've got to go back up. It's such an undulating trail that every downhill takes you back uphill. Is that, is that blue skies? Are you kidding me, huh? It's been so long. For the first time in four days, I've got a tailwind. And it's really helpful, it's really helpful. It's just pushing me along. Did Slim Beacon two and a half miles. It's stormy. Shouldn't have eaten that bacon and egg roll. Maybe super parched. I'm going through the water like nothing. There ain't no taps. There ain't no taps uh, locally. So still got a race to go to get to another tap, which I wasn't planning on getting to until tomorrow morning. Anyway, beautiful views to the north of us there. That right there in the distance is Ditchlin Beacon. We're on Ditchlin Beacon right now. And uh, we have views to the north, we have views to the south, we have seen all the way down to Brighton, home of Brighton Pier and Baldwin Bankrupt, and that's about it. Yeah, greatness. So roughly five miles to Devil's Dyke. Before we reach there, we go through Saddlecombe's Farm. I can top up my water there. But I want to reach Devil's Dyke, preferably before five o'clock because that's when it's due to start raining. So I want to have camp set up by then and just uh, be taking care of my feet, keeping everything dry. Because today has been a good day in terms of weather. I've managed to get my uh, down jacket dry, uh, my fleece dry, so I want to keep it that way, hopefully. So well, we've got a little bit of cover here. Gonna take a moment. That stretch back there was one of the worst I've had. Such a slip and slide. Every single step, just sliding, sliding along. So, and the wind is just crazy. But while we've got some cover here, I'm just gonna have some of this energy energy gel. Um, never tried it before, but uh, let's have a go. Oh, I like that. Mm. And it tastes like Lucasade. Now I want some Lucasade. I've been craving chocolate biscuits. Now I'm craving Lucasade. Should be all right from the rain tonight. This is our shelter. Air in the sleeping bag. Trying to get everything dried off. I was passing by this old church. And uh, a couple of old ladies asked me if I wanted anything to drink. I got myself a coffee, oh man. And then they, they said I could uh, stay in the porch. 
Uh, <laughs> things are looking up. So we don't have to worry about the rain tonight. Because a lot of work does go into it. I'm constantly checking the map for where I can possibly camp and note the word possibly because sometimes I get there and it's not possible. So I need to move on, keep looking. So this is a luxury because I can actually like, this, I couldn't set up camp at three o'clock in the afternoon like I have today. So it gives me that time to rest Refresh, get my feet dry, try and dry some other things like my socks. It's probably not possible. Um, but yeah, just just rest. So I'm just attempting to dry out my little hat here, my socks and all that on top of the GSI pot as we cook. So we're basically, we're using that gas in two different ways. In one way, to heat up water, but at the same time, dry stuff or attempt to. I've got dry feet, I've got something to eat. This is like a lunch. I'm making up for the dinner I missed out on yesterday. We're doing good. It is raining, but I'm not out in it. The hospitality is real. Uh, not only am I shouted from the elements out there, but a uh, guy named Jason comes to drop me a big old coffee and a couple of sausage sandwiches and a blanket. I love this place. He's also currently drying my socks and shoes. So we'll be good to go tomorrow. Jason, you're a legend. Time to bed down. Oh. <sighs> feeling good about tonight. And feeling good in general. I mean, no, no aches or pains or anything like that. Uh, I've got a bit of a sore spot on my back uh, from my pack, but apart from that, yeah, tip top shape. Don't think I'm gonna be pursuing all that much night hiking from here on out. Last night the trail just seemed to blend into everything else. What with that and the wrong turn, yeah, it was a, it was a bit of a nightmare. Still, just glad to be in here tonight. In total so far, calculated, I think uh, I've traveled 32 and a half miles from Eastbourne to Pikeham. That's probably slow. Four days for 32 and a half miles. The winter is my excuse. The wind, the rain, the dark. I'm going to sleep. I'll see you in the morning. You guys like my belt? It's multifunctional. Well, this should be the last of the rain for a whole two days, though I'm not counting on it. So as I leave the comfort of the church porch, all my aches and pains are coming on today. Rested up too long. That's what I get for resting up. But I want to give a special thanks to Jason, Louise, Oscar, and Dylan for their hospitality, you know. 
there's not enough of that that goes around in this country um, you're lucky to pass someone on the trail and get hello so uh yeah special thanks to them they really they they saved my hiney uh drying my boots socks keep my stomach full and keeping the coffees coming i mean amazing people see brighton and the sea way in the distance down there that's the sun I haven't seen that in days where am i visibility remains poor here on day five but uh at least it stopped raining I've dipped down in the Devil's Dyke estate, but I just can't escape this fog. That sun lasted a whole two minutes, and uh, but it is supposed to come out again to play a little later. Supposed to. So, you know, I'm just gonna take a few minutes here and see if we can wait out the fog. It's supposed to be, uh, getting a bit brighter in about 15, 20 minutes. Um, because we're missing some pretty awesome views, I imagine. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna have a coffee. It's the first time I actually stopped for a coffee on the trail as I'm moving. So yeah. So currently this is all we can see right now, which is not a lot. Um, and hopefully once we get coffee up, be able to have a bit more visibility. So currently in Devil Dyke, and Devil's Dyke got its name from a legend. The legend says that the devil was furious at the conversion of the people of the world to Christianity and decided to dig a dike through the South Downs so the sea could flow in and drown their villages. And that didn't work out too well being one of the driest valleys in the UK. No rain, no wind, the sun peeking through the clouds every now and then and uh, the warmth of the sun and it, the way it shines on the landscape it's almost like an entirely new trail it's really a morale booster here's the zombie horde they're catching up to me <laughs> I always gotta make up scenarios like that in my mind it makes it more entertaining like when you see when you see someone jogging and then someone's like jogging not far behind them. He's being chased. Just heading down this stretch from Trudy Hill. It's a super long stretch, um, but this, re this uh, break in the weather has reinvigorated me. I've got like a second wind. It's great. Um, just to the north of us there, we have all these wetlands. You can see we have the village over there. I'm not sure what it is, but obviously continuing westwards to the Chanterbury Ring. Weather's beautiful over there, not so much up here. So I have arrived at the Chanctonbury Ring.
So again, the Chanctonbury ring, it's a bit of a mystery. No one really knows what it is or why it's here. And there's another local legend that involves the devil. And it's said that the devil can be summoned by running around this clump of trees anti-clockwise seven times. And when the devil appears, the summoner will be offered a bowl of soup in exchange for his soul. I'm not sure that's a good deal. And again, Mr. Crowley pops up, Alistair Crowley, who lived uh, just a couple of miles away in a place called Staining. And old Alistair was convinced that this was a place of power, a site of power. The ring is also supposed to increase fertility in women who sleep underneath the trees for one night. Goodness gracious. Our first sunset. First one in five days. It's a good one. It's a real good one. I'm just gonna sit here and enjoy this. It's all the difference being out of that wind. It's not uh, wind like we had it over the past few days, but it's uh, it's wind enough that gives you a little bit of a chill. Um, so it makes that difference. I've been looking around, there's plenty of dead wood around here. So I'm gonna set up my little outkit stove shortly and uh, get a little fire on. I know a lot of people are big fans of the firebox, but this little outkit stove, this is my favorite stove. Uh, it's cheap as well, cheap, it's compact, it's lightweight, it's good. Let's get it set up, get fire on. And now that's so much better. Tonight, beef stew with pearl barley. So I bought a, a pillow purposefully for this trip and I lost it before I even used it before I even took it out I took it home and I lost it so I got the old backpack as a pillow before I bed down for the night just want to give you guys an update on where I am at right now so obviously started out in Eastbourne made my way along Beachy Head and the Seven Sisters up to Alfriston along there's Foral Beacon southeast is where I use the drying rooms to dry my sleeping bag and my clothes and whatnot and then obviously carried them along up to Ditchland Beacon past Ditchland Beacon and around here is where I spent the night in the church today traveled along past Devil's Dyke past Falcon Down all the way to here the Chanctonbury Ring and I believe once we reach Amberley over here that will be the halfway point Obviously from here, I'll be passing through Amberley tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to be over the halfway point this time tomorrow night. So making progress. I'll see you guys in the morning. Beautiful sunrise this morning, though it was fresh. Those clear nights always cool for colder temperatures. So right now, headed down to a place called Washington, uh, where I can refill my water bottles and uh, and have a coffee. Because I've only had one coffee this morning, so it's not going to work out for me. Leaving the Chanctonbury Ring 
now, no mysterious happenings, no devils being summoned. It's a really pretty place though. Uh, you have views all around and uh, especially at night where you can see all the lights from the towns and the villages and it's all just, it's all just lit up. What is it today? Is it day six? Day seven? I don't even know. I don't even know what day of the week it is. Next tap, Amberley, six miles west. All this stony, rocky terrain right here. I'm really feeling it through the shoes. The trouble is, it was either these shoes or the boots, and the boots would have given me blisters. I've got no blisters whatsoever, no signs of blisters, no hot spots or anything with these shoes. Just unfortunately, they're not uh, not waterproof. And obviously the uh, heel isn't particularly that thick. So yeah, you gotta, you gotta measure up the pros and cons. Boots waterproof, but would have got blisters, would have uh, got blisters long by now. So yeah, I suppose I made the right decision. Some beautiful views of the sea down there. Not so long ago I passed a sign saying five miles to Amberley, 52 miles to Winchester. So by that, uh, by that math, I'm going to be over the halfway point before I reach Amberley. Oh, I think I'm gonna have to stop soon and have something to eat. I'm uh, not too far from Amberley. I hear the old uh, blaring train horns going by. There's a train station in Amberley, so I'm not too far from it now, but uh, energy wise, I'm running out of it. And uh, it's not, no aches and pains or nothing like that. It's all just kind of muscular. Maybe a bit uh, psychological, but yeah. So I'm gonna stop shortly and make up some uh, porridge, I reckon. Some baked banana porridge or something like that. Toasted banana porridge, that's what it be. These fire pot meals, they are good. Not all of them. The other day I had uh, baked apple porridge and that was just tasteless, just tasteless. And then, last night with a beef stew and pearl barley uh, again tasteless there's no taste to it there's no just it just needed a bit of salt it needed it needed something it just very bland so yeah although uh some of them are good you get decent pieces of meat and whatnot in, in a lot of the um the meals but uh be careful which ones Fueled up and ready to go. It's the last of the good days today. Uh, I say that like we've had a lot of them. Well, we had like two days of good weather. Uh, rain's returning tomorrow. So I'm considering doing some night hiking um, just to push on, just to push us that bit further. Uh, because uh, after today, it's about uh, two or three days of rain once again. And we know the results of that. I've reached the village of Amberley, but it hasn't been an easy one. It's been pretty tough, I don't know why. Maybe I'm getting tired. I don't know, but I've got to actually come off the trail here and uh, do a bit of resupply. <laughs> Get myself some chocolate biscuits, I can't take the craving no more. I need them. I trekked a whole mile off trail, half a mile down a hill, half a mile up the hill. I've got my chocolate biscuits though, it's worth it. Turns out I didn't need to walk all the way back up the hill. There's a pavement. I was just going to stop here 
enjoy the view and make a coffee. Trouble is, there ain't no water. Great one, Amberley. Great one. And according to this, the nearest tap west is 12 miles. That's a slog. And it's not that I don't have water. I do have a bottle left, but I don't want to be wasting that on a coffee right now if we're going to be walking a whole lot into the evening. And I also need water to make my dinners. So not going to risk it. I'm not going to have a coffee right now. I'm going to continue. And uh, hopefully that little 12 miles west sign is, uh, is incorrect, because I think it is. I don't think there's one too far away from it. problem. I do not want to get my feet wet. Carefully. Ah. That bit wasn't the bit I was worried about. It's this bit. There's no getting across there with dry feet. Time to take the shoes off. Oh, that cold. That cold. There just would have been no way around it. Cold. But it's probably doing my feet some good actually. It'll probably turn out to be the wrong turn. <laughs> oh. I was going to say we made it across, but. Uh, there's more. <laughs> Made it. And this is why you always carry a bandana. to get in between those toesies. Once I dry my feet off, I will be letting them aerate for 10 minutes or so. Make sure they're proper dry before I put those socks back on. And also be giving them some powder before putting the socks back on. Because we still got a ways to go. You know, I mean, we're over halfway, but that doesn't mean there's still not a good 48, 47 miles to go. So, need to be taken care of the feet. I've got about two hours of sunlight left, maximum. Um, but we are making good progress, as you can see, all the way over there in the wetlands there, the river Aaron. All the way over there, that's where we had to slog through all that uh, flooded, flooded area in the bare feet. But, uh, so we're making progress. 
I think it's going to be today, uh, tomorrow, and then the next day we're finished. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Lucas Aid Energy Dow time. Don't know if it does anything. In all honesty, I didn't see, I didn't notice any difference, but it tastes good. So by my estimation, it's just the other side of this field, the other side of the woods, the other side of another field, there should be a farm where there is a tap, we can refill, we have that coffee that we were supposed to have a couple of hours ago. So I just had to stop to appreciate these views, right? Pretty, pretty spectacular views, especially at this time of the day where the sun's just about setting. And, uh, you know, it's been days now. Been on my own for days. You know, it would be nice to actually have someone to do this with. Because when I set up camp tonight, there's no one to speak to. There's no one to be like, oh, you remember these views? Yeah, there's none of that. It's a uh, trail can be a pretty lonely place, right? Anyway, shut up. Pretty much the last of the sun for well, the next few days. I've arrived at the next water tap. And the trouble is the water tap is in the cafe and the cafe is closed. Which means I need to keep moving. So here's the thing. The next tap is very important because if I don't get water at the next tap, then I've got no water to drink. I've got no water to cook my food and it will be, uh, yeah, be a very difficult evening. I'm having to keep a close eye on the GPS right now to make sure I'm headed in the right direction because it's going to be so easy to miss the signs in this type of light. Well, this is a bit more pleasant than the other evening's night hike. Um, still treacherous though. I stepped, it's a bit uh, slippery, muddy, and I stepped in a, a hole that nearly took my ankle out. So, still need a good head torch. I haven't got one. Because the battery's been obviously used every single night and it's dying over the course of uh, these past few days and it's just getting dimmer and dimmer. And uh, it's almost unusable now, so I got your phone torch. Got the phone torch going. Chaluk. Just heat. I'm just gonna cook up my food while I'm here. That way, I can just refill up on the water because the next one ain't for next tap's not for quite a distance. So, I'm gonna eat my dinner here and then we're gonna find somewhere to, to make camp. Legs are burning. We've really done some mileage today. And uh, yeah, I'm paying for it a bit now. 
and I think I'll, I definitely will be in the morning. I'm going to be checking the forecast. I don't think it's supposed to rain until tomorrow afternoon, so if that's the case, I won't be putting up the poncho, just laying out the bivy and uh, some good old fashioned cowboy camping under the stars because I, I just want to sleep right now. Got to find a place first. Oh, I can't go no more, but I'm in like the worst stretch I've ever been on this whole trip so far. So what we have is fences, a road and fences. So there's literally nowhere. If I climb the fence, there's a barbed wire on that though. Oh, okay, so it burned out. It did rain last night, it had some showers. So I threw the poncho over the sleeping bag with the bag. It just hid. Oh, it's an early one today. Let's get moving. All packed up, ready to go. We just got the sun creeping over the hills there as we begin uh, day seven, the journey of day seven. But not that we're going to see much of the sun because uh, rain is incoming or according to the forecast at 10.45 onwards even though it's raining now. So and we're hours away from 10.45. I've got the poncho on, I'm prepped, I'm not getting wet today. If it starts raining I'll just throw the backpack under the pon poncho. Um, last night was hard going, really hard going. I didn't get to uh, pitch camp until about 10:45 uh, in the evening. Super tired, and then uh, I checked the forecast, no rain, and got in a sleeping bag. Physically tired, mentally not tired, so I didn't manage to get to sleep for a while. But when I did get to sleep, I was awoken by little rain droplets on my face. And so I had to pull the poncho over everything, over me, and just lay it over. Uh, which is a shame because I was using it as a pillow and it was quite comfortable. I can't wait until my son is older. I can do these trails with him and, and do all these camps with him. Because, uh, yeah, if I did it now, and we're walking down this stretch, it would probably, probably take about seven days to walk down this stretch picking up every single rock he finds and there's a lot of them a lot of rocks here son you'd love it got a little piece of history just tucked away in the woodside here a guy named Joseph Osterman Osterman crashed and exploded in Phyllis Wood Trayford at 6 30 a.m. following an attack by number 43 and 601 squadron hurricanes during sortie to attack Farnborough O-B-L-T, Osterman, killed. U-F-S-Z, Rossler, U-F-S-Z, Seitz, and Oberger, Oberger, Brieger, bailed out and captured. So just past some little old ladies. I asked them how, how far how far is it to a to a nice destination? And they were like, oh not far. Not far. Probably about 10 miles. Ugh. This is a hill and a half. But it's the 
nice steep one. Once I reach the top of it, then it's either flat or downhill. Slowly get to the top. So I reached the top, but I thought I might have a little bit of a, a flat, obviously go downhill, but it's not for long, because we've got to go down to go back up. So I climbed up this massive hill for fuck all. I was supposed to go take that road over that way. Instead, I decided to just climb up this massive hill. It's another one of those fucking days. So I decided to carry on because there's a route that uh, connects to the South Downs Way. At the top here we have this little compass. And that's the way we want to head. Bust the hill, six miles towards Winchester, 30 miles. You probably can't see it from here. But a big antenna at the top of the hill, past the hill. We're stopping before then. As you can see, this side's all wet and this side isn't. So you know which way the winds are coming from. Oh, it's just taking a couple of minutes here to get out of the out of the wind, out of the rain. Then we'll be continuing. Today, it's, uh, yeah, as each day progresses, it gets a little bit harder, it seems. So I've just gone through Harting Down and uh, I'm just taking a little break, but it's given me memories. Okay, good memories because uh, this after the first time I attempted this trail, I then came out shortly thereafter, tried it again, and I did just get to Harting Down there. And that's where the mother of my son came pick me up. My baba was just a little baby at the time, sleeping in the car. And uh, yeah, good times. And also, here's an interesting one for you. Not too far from here, I actually think it's above us on that big old hill up there. But there is a tower called Vandalian Tower, and that's a tower that commemorates and honors an American state, but a failed American state that would have become known as Westylvania. But the British colony never grew larger than the founders themselves. That's one you didn't know. Just taking cover from the rain and wind right now because uh, that's a smart thing to do. My, my feet are already getting wet. So I'm gonna hold off until the rain settles down a bit. So I've arrived at this country park and uh, it's all quiet. I'm under this little shelter here in case the rain comes on again, which I imagine it will. But I think I think I might just sleep here tonight. Just get up early in the morning and uh, it will be good because it's late now. So I'm gonna cook up some food and then bed down. Lots of frogs around here. We've run out of gas, so the wood stove is doing the job. Look at that blister. That's a good one. Just drying out my feet. Gonna do the old routine and then cool it at night. Oh, so I'll see you guys in the morning. Illustrious words of boys to men, we've come to the end of the road. I'm out of food, I'm out of gas, and which is really annoying because physically I can not continue. But I do feel somewhat redeemed because this is only a couple of miles from where I stopped in my first attempt. So essentially, if you want to see the entire trip, 
go watch that video. It's been a roller coaster ride, and I'm not just talking about the, the undulating terrain. 77 miles in total through wind, rain, and sun. Had it all. And I'm not going to lie, I thought about quitting lots. I thought about quitting on day one at one o'clock in the morning when I was getting hammered by that storm. But, you know, there's certainly something deep about having your whole life on your back, picking up, moving, making camp, and repeating the next day. I think I'm gonna miss it. But for now, this is where I turn off the trail, my friends. It's been a ride. I'll catch you on the next one. Goodness gracious.